Good morning. Good morning. I got to get a little. I got a little lost talking to people. Imagine that. Me ever doing that. Anyway, welcome to Seymour First United Methodist Church, and we are so glad to have all of you here today. And those who are online, we're glad to have you because I know for several of you, this is the best way for you to to worship with us. And I appreciate having you. Um, got a couple announcements. First of all, if you're a visitor, please fill out the card. In, the, in front of the pew in front of you. So we have your name, address, information. Or if you want to call from me, you can note that on there. If you have something we need to pray about. Also, and there's also prayer cards in the pew. If you have something we need to pray about, fill out the card, either one of these cards, and put them in the um, plate when it goes by. Also, trunk or treat. <laughs> Truck or treat? Is anybody coming to truck or treat? 
Oh, we need lots of people, guys. We need people coming and, and bring lots of candy. Even Beth, who's in China, doing speaking engagements in China, sent money for us to have candy. So please come. We want to have lots of vehicles set up. We want to have everything all ready and just have a really good time getting to see the kids. Uh, getting to see new kids, get to, you know, get to know them, know their parents. It's a great opportunity for us to connect with one another. A couple announcements also about the uh, women in faith. I always love Loris. She gives me a great little list. The women in faith would like to thank everyone who helped with the bazaar yesterday. I got a beautiful wreath on my front door. There is leftover bake sale items and drinks in the hallway for a free will donation. She's got a little box that says donations. Go get yourself some snacks on the way back out. Go that way and you'll see the table. And we'll be glad to have you do that. And that is, the women in faith would greatly appreciate it. Also, Gary, let me know, you know, November 7th is what? Does anybody remember what November 7th is? Blood drive. Blood drive. Good job, Gabby. November 7th is a blood drive. And Gary went to double check it, and we have about 20 spots still left. Let's fill it up so that when that blood tr truck gets here, it's worthwhile the trip to get all the blood from us. So please, let's fill that up. Tell your neighbors, tell your friends, tell your kids. If your grandkids are old enough, tell them. Um, oh, I forgot something. I'm so sorry, Diane. She even told me, and then I didn't do it. Trick or treat starts at 4, ends at 5.30, that's tonight, 4 to 5.30, we need cars, we need candy, and we really need helpers for games. That's one of the things that we do different than a lot of the trunk or treats, we have games at the same time. So she needs helper for games. So if you don't want to pass out candy, but you want to participate and be able to help people connect, come and Diane will put you to work having fun with the games. She always has fun games. Where is our choir anyway? They disappeared. Anyway, we got a few people missing, probably. Um, our new series continues today, the Let's Get Real. We're taking Jesus' teachings, for those who weren't here last week, we're taking Jesus' teachings and apply them to our everyday lives, and it'll go all the way up to November 24th, which then Advent is after that. And we need to remember that Jesus didn't teach a list of rules. Jesus taught a new way of living. So we'll be talking about that as we go through things. Um, at this time, I think I've got through everything. It's great. At this time, is that time for us to quiet our minds? Anything that's on your mind right now that's just kind of ruminating in there, just kind of put it in a box, put it on a shelf, and take a deep breath. And as Judy shares her gifts of the prelude, as the kids come forward lighting the candles, or even maybe big kids, <laughs> adults, um, please, I ask you at this time to prepare your hearts and your minds for worship. Mm.
Thank you, Dr. Judy. That, that set chills down my spine. It was just so wonderful. And now, this morning, it is time for our gathering prayer. Merciful God, we have not been humble. We have discouraged others from seeking you, or worse, we overlook them entirely. Forgive us, O oh God, and teach us to boast only to you. Help us to perceive when others seek after you. Give us the light and sight of your wisdom and ways. For merciful God, you always hear us when we cry out. You stay close when we are in distress. It is in you whom we seek refuge, and you deliver us from evil. Let praise flow from our mouths to your ears, for we can hear and we see that you are indeed good. All glory, praise, and honor are due to you, O God, our Redeemer and our strength. Amen.
Oh. She Yo. There you go. We're, we're doing the technical thing That's so okay. well today. It's just part of it. Hey, it's live. It's okay. It's it fun. is, yes. If the ushers could please come forward now, it's time for our tithes and offerings. Now, okay. Okay. The Lord is indeed good, for God has blessed us richly. Let us offer back a portion in gratitude and love. Will the ushers please come forward to receive the tithes and offering? God, the creator of the universe, we offer to you these gifts for the glory of your kingdom. In the name of God, Father and Mother, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's sing the kids of Children's Church. Oh, there are other children. Let's sing anyway.
Dear God, let us not only hear of you, but see you with our own eyes through your word. May we perceive what you perceive. We, your servants, are listening. Amen. And now for a morning scripture from Psalms 34, verses 1 through 8. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. And then our morning reading this morning continues in the Gospel of Mark. I'm sorry, I need water. I obviously didn't fully prepare. Um, it starts, it's in the Gospel of Mark. We're continuing on where we were last week. Gospel of Mark, <coughs> chapter 10. I believe it's 46 through 52, and I always like to double check that I'm telling you right. 46 through 52. It is 46 through 52. At least that's what I've been praying over. Okay. They came to Jericho. As he and his disciples in a large crowd, he is Jesus, by the way, as he and his disciples in a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet. But he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The word of God for the people of God. Is anyone here a fan of the show Young Sheldon? Raise your hand if you've, if you've watched it. If you've watched it, that's close enough, okay? You know, it's a spinoff of Big Bang Theory, right? And it's about um, Sheldon's younger years, more or less. That's what's called Young Sheldon, I guess. If you've never seen it before, let me give you a quick intro to the show so you'll understand why I'm talking about Young Sheldon in the middle of a worship service. It's based on fictional characters. Sheldon is a younger version of the Sheldon that's in the Big Bang Theory, who is a Caltech scientist, okay? He's a brilliant child from birth. You know, he remembered things whenever he was a baby. Started high school at nine years old, and man, did he excel in math and science. Shortly after, he went to college, and then he went to graduate school shortly after, still all the way under 18. Let's just say he was really smart. Well, he was really smart in some ways. He had a twin sister, Missy. Now, she had somewhat normal intelligence. She struggled a little bit with some, some things like math and science, the things he excelled in. But Missy excels in other things. Socially, man, she was the person everybody liked. She got invited to parties. She enjoyed life. But she also 
would observe and she could understand human emotions. She spent a lot of time teaching Sheldon those kind of things. Now in one episode, Sheldon and Missy have been asked to go for some testing on the twins. And they really wanted to have the two of them go to this testing, so they went. And the testing included showing pictures to them and they expressed what they saw. Well, some of the pictures, Sheldon would just give a quick answer and dismiss it and move on because it obviously didn't involve his, his gifts of math or science. So it just didn't interest him to look any deeper. But those same pictures, Missy gave very insightful answers for such a young girl. Where Sheldon was quick to answer and dismiss, she looked deeper and could perceive what was happening. They even start to take the picture away. She said, I'm not done. They brought it back and she explained more of what she saw in there, including the human emotion, the actions, what could be happening. Sheldon didn't possess the skill to perceive people's emotions or needs. You know, the, for example, one picture that they put in front of them was a family of chimpanzees and they're sitting on the couch and stuff drinking coffee. Well, when it was Sheldon's turn, Sheldon just looked at it and said, well, you know, there's a bunch of chimpanzees sitting around, you know, not drinking coffee, drinking tea. Drinking tea. And chimpanzees don't do that. So he was done. He said, you see anything else? No, that's pretty much it. They're sitting. They don't do that. Then Missy. When Missy was in another room and she answered, she said, oh, there's a tea party going on. Oh, and there's two people there that are gossiping. Oh, it must be saucy. Looking at them, oh, it's saucy. And she said, and see the, the mommy chimpanzee? She's sending the little child out of the room, so it must be really, really saucy what they're talking about. And then, you know, she, they, like I said, they start to take it away. She says, I'm not done. She says, on the wall, there's a picture of an older chimpanzee. I bet that's their meemaw. I bet she's either bowling or dead, one or the other. I mean, she could just keep looking deeper and deeper and deeper where Sheldon was done within seconds. While Sheldon could only see what everybody else could see, Missy always could see deeper. And she could perceive things that others never took the time to bother to look at and perceive. She saw what others may not bother or even care to see. Which leads me to our scripture today. Jesus had compassion for everyone. I know that's not news to you but especially those who were often overlooked. That's a common theme of his ministry. If you hear this story, we hear the miracle, the healing of this man's blindness. But what did Jesus' compassion also heal? Let's go back to that scripture to remember, okay? When he hears Jesus is going by, the blind man shouts out, Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me. And how did the crowd respond? Do you remember? I know I didn't tell you there was going to be a quiz, did I? Yeah, be quiet. Yeah, it's like, be quiet. Shut up over there. But we're, we're, we're having a conversation with Jesus here. It's a big crowd. They don't want him to be interrupting anything. They ordered him to be quiet, and they wanted him to go back into the background once again. I kind of think about, you know, they're saying we're walking and listening to Jesus and we don't want to hear your belly aching anymore. Or possibly just, that's just Bartimaeus. You know, he's a city beggar. Ignore him. He's always there at this corner. In other words, push him to the curb so we can ignore him and go back to enjoying Jesus. Now, like Missy, my story. Jesus could see more than what the crowd saw. He saw someone in need. He saw someone not to ignore. Jesus does a lot of that a lot in the Gospels. Have you noticed that? We see, you know, he saw Zacchaeus in the tree. He saw the criminal hanging on the cross next to him when he himself was dying. He saw Matthew as much, much more than just a tax collector. So how about today in our lives? Remember, this is our, you know, let's get real. How about in our lives? 
How about the mom barely getting by, trying to care for her kids, pay the bills, and things just don't go her way? Is she seen? Or do we just push her to the curb and not show compassion because we're just tired of hearing the story? How about those with medical issues and the bills are piling up, the unrelenting pain keeps coming. It's chipping away at them to the point they can't even think straight. Do we get tired of hearing their story and just push them to the curb? Or do we see them like Jesus and act out in compassion? Like Bartimaeus, he wanted to see that Jesus' compassion also allowed him to be seen. Sheldon would not have seen him. But Sheldon wouldn't have even tried to see more. Missy would have seen him because she saw others with compassion. Jesus sees everyone with compassion. And Jesus wants us to model that behavior. Jesus invites us to model that behavior so that people are not overlooked. Invites us to take the time to see beyond what is on the surface. He did two healings that day. He noticed the man used to be overlooked, the man who used to be overlooked, but he also gave him that sight that day. We sometimes forget acknowledging someone, noticing someone is very healing in many times. But there's more, like the Ginzu knife commercial. There's more. You really should laugh at that when I say it. It really is weird that you don't. Okay. Anyway, but I want to go back to the scripture to note something. Okay? Something really big. We often overlook it in the words. Actually, if you look on the front of our bulletin, Something big is even omitted out of that picture, and that's because Mar not because Margaret omitted it. It just wasn't in the picture that she picked up to put on the bulletin. So I want you to hear this, okay? When the man stood up and came to Jesus, did Jesus heal him right away? No. Thank you. <laughs> it had to be clear to him he was blind, right? Because everybody else knew he was blind, but Jesus is Jesus, so he would know he was blind. He didn't assume that was the request. Instead, he gave him his autonomy to be able to answer what was his request. He asked the gentleman, what do you want me to do for you? We often forget to ask. We just often assume we know what the need is. But what's most important, what was Bartimaeus' response? My teacher, let me see again. Let me see again. Again is a key word that gets glazed over. He could see at one time and wanted to see again. I believe that is the third part of the additional message Jesus was giving to the crowd surrounding him. He taught them to notice. He taught them to ask the man what he needed, but he also listened for what the man wanted and he wanted to see again. And I believe that's the message we need to hear and learn today from Jesus' teaching to help us get real again. At one time, each of us have been on fire for Jesus. That's why many of us are here. At one time, we were on fire for Jesus. We could see those in the world hurting, those overlooked, those in need of compassion. Each of us was on fire at one time because we could see like Jesus. And as a result, we were on fire to do Jesus' work, being compassionate, pouring out love and mercy upon others not afraid to get our hands dirty or washing other people's feet. But you know, sometimes you get tired and you get overwhelmed. And you don't see quite as clearly anymore. 
or you don't take the time to dig deeper. We're all guilty of it at some time or another, including me. Maybe we don't see others as well as we used to. Maybe we don't see you with compassion like Missy, or see people deeper and use compassion like Jesus. Like I said, Jesus did two healings that day, but really, if you think about it, three in a way. He noticed a man that was used to being overlooked and told to be quiet and just people moved on by. And the second one, he gave back his sight that day. He gave back his sight that day. But the third thing was, in addition, he taught the crowd to see like Jesus sees. See intentionally to notice where compassion is needed. Perhaps today, we are the ones that Jesus is asking, what do you want me to do for you? Say that again. Perhaps we're the ones that Jesus is asking, what do you want me to do for you? And we may simply just need to respond, my teacher, let me see again. Amen. As we go into the intercessory prayer, when I say, O oh, preceding God, I invite you to respond, teach us to see and hear like you. O oh God, we come to you because we know you will hear our cry. We come to you because you call us near to you. We come to you because you deliver and save. We come to you now with our prayers and petitions. We pray for the local and universal church. Give us the humility to walk in your way and see those who are overlooked. O oh, perceiving God, teach us to see and hear like you. We pray for the leaders in our nation and the nations around the world. Give them the courage to walk in peace and the compassion for all, not just a few. O oh, perceiving God, teach us to see and hear like you. We pray for those who are in need. Give us ears to hear their cries and be agents of your mercy. O oh, perceiving God, teach us to see and hear like you. We pray for those who have pain. Heal and touch and deliver them, O oh God. Replace their pain with your peace. O oh, perceiving God, teach us to see and hear like you. Remember those who have died. Help us give comfort to those who are left behind. Help us to sense their sorrows and respond. O oh, perceiving God, teach us to see and hear like you. We lift our hidden prayers to you in silence at this time, for you hear even that which is unspoken. O 
all perceiving God, teach us to see and hear like you. All glory and praise is yours now and forever. And now for confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, as our acolyte, Katie, thank you so much for being an acolyte today, since for some reason we have zero kids today, which is odd. But um, as the acolyte comes and takes the light of Christ out into the world, let us join our voices in the closing hymn as we also are to take the light of Christ out into the world.
your charge and your blessing. Our benediction today is adapted from a poem I found, Let Me See, by Star by Steve Garnis Holmes, the author of Unfolding Light. May God open the eyes of our hearts to see Jesus' grace in every moment. May Jesus enable us to see with hope and gratitude, with trust and humility and compassion. May the Holy Spirit teach us to look with a mind as open as our wide open eyes. And may we look in every gaze to see they that they really are, not as we already think they are. And may we see our own hurts with those same open and loving eyes to extend grace to ourselves. Teacher, may we see.